They'll throw on first down with Griffin. And his first pass is incomplete. Holding offense. A penalty is and on second and ten now. Second and ten now, Griffin. And I think that one might have been intercepted, but he will be ruled out of bounds. So this will go only as incomplete. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. And he slides to avoid the hit. It'll be a gain of eight yards. And that's going to make it fourth down. On fourth down, the Browns hand things over to the veteran Britton Colquitt to punt. The rookie fifth rounder Tyreek Hill back deep for Kansas City. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. On first and 10, Smith. Well, he's going to take a shot right away. And that's caught inside the 30. And all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. Tyreek Hill, 78 yards. And the Chiefs are going to take a first quarter lead. And when a Hail Mary is completed for a touchdown pass like that, I think any defensive coordinator just puts their face right into their hands. I don't think there's any doubt about it. And I don't have stats in front of me. I don't have the empirical numbers that say that in recent years, the Hail Mary pass has been completed more than it has been. But it feels that way, doesn't it? And I know the defenses are spending more time on it. I think the biggest mistake they make is that they play everything from behind the receiver. I think they've got to start getting people in front as well to try and knock the ball away. And just one tick to go, so this will obviously be the final play of this first quarter. On the ground, this is Isaiah Crowell. A strong running. <laughs> and he'll be out of bounds, able to take it down. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. On first down, Griffin complete here to Gary Barnage. And he gets it down to the 32. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. On second down, Griffin. That is incomplete. Andre Hawkins, the intended receiver. And it's third and short. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. They'll come out in the pistol. Third and two, now Griffin. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. So now the Browns will turn it over to their field goal unit here. This will be from 49 yards out. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense and over the post. And now here comes Kansas City. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try to add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead. And that's caught inside the 30. And all the way down to the 22-yard line. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. 
And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off, it's the Pro Bowl corner, Joe Hayden with it. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. And as the Cleveland Browns come back out on the field, They'll get going again on offense here in a second, but 1-15 this last year, and it's a franchise that since moving back to Cleveland in 99 has only been to the playoffs one time. Hard to believe, right? Just two winning seasons in that yeah, time frame two. as well. But I think there's optimism to be had here in Cleveland. I think that the fans, it's tough for them to see it after another 1-15 season, but I think that they have a plan in place to move this franchise forward. Ownership, front office, head coach, all in lockstep together with a vision and a plan that they, intend, that they intend to execute. Well, we're gonna let you off a little easy there, LR. Halftime interrupted, and we are ready to get to this third quarter. Here comes the Chiefs offensive unit as they'll have it to begin quarter number three. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters, as I also like to call them. You've done... And that's caught at the 25. And all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. Jeremy Macklin, 75 yards. And the Chiefs are able to grow their lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Now, after the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. The return man is Mario Alford. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. The Chiefs defense making their way back onto the field. They begin with a run by Crowell. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. The all-pro safety Eric Berry in on the stop. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. On second down, here's Griffin. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Griffin, he's going to float this one deep right side. The intended target was Corey Coleman, and it's fourth down. Well, they haven't had a whole lot of success in the passing game here. Now, in the second half, he's thinking, I guess maybe just take a shot deep. I think you're right. Almost looking for a bailout, isn't he? Can my receiver go up and make a big play for me? Can I create a penalty downfield, maybe pick up an interference call and get that yardage downfield? Anything trying to get going again, but you're right. He definitely took a shot. Now, this will probably be the last play of the quarter. One receiver left, three to the right. Smith on first down. Going to look deep for Wilson. And this will be caught at the 30. And all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. Albert Wilson, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Chiefs add on to their lead. Well, that was the fly route for a touchdown, and since he caught that one and scored it, I got to tell the story. Before the game, we were standing there. He was running deep routes, dropped one. It bounced up and just hit me right in the gut, and I said, come on, man, but there there was no drop. Yeah, you okay now? I'm good. All right, I'm good. good. We got the ice pack up here. You're, you're just fine. And we're back now here in Cleveland, where the fourth quarter will begin with a kickoff following the score on the final play of the third quarter. Santos out now. He'll kick it away. The return now by Alford. So quick on the spin. Uh, he's spinning, man. 
And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. And the Browns getting set to go. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that. The coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Second and 10, once again, Griffin. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. On third down, Griffin. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. He was looking for Terrell Pryor that time. And now it's fourth down. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. Taking it about the 16. Oh, he shifts past him. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And it's Chiefs football, first and 10. The Browns defense getting ready. And not a good performance by them or by their offense, for that matter. It just hasn't been a good game. And it's real easy at this point to point fingers. Hey, you guys didn't get a whole lot done today. Didn't give us much of a cushion. But the truth of the matter is, having played defense, you're pro And that's caught inside the 30. And all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. Jeremy Macklin, two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Chiefs are able to grow their lead. And to me, that touchdown allows you to start grinning widely on your sideline. I think they pretty much locked this one away. Yeah, that's the clencher, the proverbial icing on the cake, if you will. They certainly made quick work of that, ultra quick work. One of the fastest drives you'll ever see, just one play resulting in the touchdown. This one taken from the seven. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? Corey Coleman, 20. And all the way in. Touchdown. Get a score closer. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team, but I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film, but this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, I agree with you totally on that one. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. Tyreek Hill on the return. He can't bring him down. The weight room does work. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Smith going to throw it. Looking deep. 